Let me read Daniel 9, verse 3 to 4. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer, in petition, in fasting, and in sackcloths and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Hallelujah. I hope you are understanding what the scripture says. Let's go verse 4. Verse 3. We'll start from verse 3. Let's, let's go. Let's read together. Verse 3. Daniel 9 verse 3. I want to say we are in a time of petitioning God with some of the things that we have been in want, in need of. We are petitioning God to move on our behalf. We are petitioning God to move on behalf of our church. We are petitioning God to move in our families. This time of fasting, even though we are not wearing sex, uh, sick clothes and ashes on our heads, but this is the time when we are spiritually we are wearing sick clothes and ashes. It means it's not a time to go on internet and watch some movies. It's not time to be on social media, Facebook. It's not time to be on WhatsApp. When you wake up, first thing you go on WhatsApp and you go on your um, uh, text messages, emails. No, it's not the time. It's time to deny yourself all those pleasure. If you are doing in email because of work, but do it after you've prayed, after you've given yourself to the Lord, and then later on when you get a chance, just go to what is important. Go to what is important. Do what is important and get off. Get off the inter social media. The Lord was showing me a lot of people that we spend so much time on social media such that we don't have time to read the word. Don't waste your time. We are in fasting if you are engaged. I know most of you, we are fasting. We are in this time of prayer and fasting. One thing the Lord was telling me is that a lot of people, they are not following instructions. You know, there are people who don't follow instructions, but the outcome is always obvious, you know. Amen? It's important. Sometimes you don't know what happens by following instructions. You know, let me give you one, one, one example of a young man stand there, tapi. Sorry, my son. There's a young man. Theo, come, my son. You see the difference in this guy's age? It's more than 10. Stand there. Stand there, my son, Theo. You see the difference? Do you see this is a young boy? How, how old are you? 15. He's 15. He's above 25. He's above 25 anyway. So that's more than 10 years difference. Do you understand? Let's just say Tapiwa is 60 and he's 25. Right? He's a young man. He's got energy, he's got power, he's got muscles, six-pack. He's well able to do whatever he wants as a young man, right? Right? And then he approaches the old man. The old man is well retired in his farm. But his job is that he cut trees and he sells them to markets. That's how he survives as an old man. This young man says, I've seen this hat. This guy makes a lot of money. The car he drives at his age, 70 years. And the house he's built, me as a young pig, just cutting trees, I've got energy. I can do better than him. So Tapiwa is in his process. They say he approaches the older man. Go and approach the older man. He says to this older man, I love this illustration that will never leave your head. He approaches this older man. He says, hey, old man, can you tell me your secret for making this wealth? He said, oh, it's all because of this cutting these woods in the forest. That's all I decided. Really? That's all? You don't have a goblin? He says, no, I don't. You don't have a witch doctor who gives you and help you? He says, no, I don't, son. All my profession is just cutting down all these trees in this forest. You see how big the forest is. You can become a millionaire if you want to. And then he says, ah, I'm going to go into a competition with you, old man. I would take this route. Come back. 
says, I am as young as I am. He comes ready with his ex. The old man looks at him and says, oh, yeah, you can take this bigger side. I'm going to take this smaller side. But, you know, we want to see who cuts more trees. Because it's a forest. There's everything. The forest is, you can't finish in a day. So they allow themselves in a day, cut trees. They begin to cut trees. Okay, so begin. They are cutting trees. What are they doing? At the end of the day, they come together again. You see, come now. You see, he's, he's all, almost there, right? But he seemed to be, he seemed to have just moved a little bit, right? So he goes back to the old man. Let's calculate who made, who cut a lot of trees. The young man says, it can't be. I have to be the one. Now they come to the young man. He has made 1,500 trees. They go to the old man. He has cut 3,000 trees. So the young man is going to ask the old man, ask him, say, what made you cut all these trees? Yet you were sitting down most of the time resting. And I was working harder than you. I worked harder than, all, than you. It's not fair. How come? You have got 3,000. I've got only 1,500. Yet I'm the one who works the hardest. You saw him cutting with speed and he was chopping trees. Do you know what the old man said to him? He said, every time you saw me sitting down, my son, I was sharpening my ex. God bless you. Results don't come because you are praying a lot. Results come because you follow instructions. You see the things that we are teaching you here. Take time to listen to the teachings. Do you want a breakthrough? For sure, for sure. Do you need a breakthrough? Are you really tired of your situation in your life? Don't just wear sackcloth in ashes. You need to say enough is enough. I need results. I need results. Some of us, we are so stuck in our old ways. What my pastor taught me 50 years ago is what I do today. What I heard on internet is different anointings are different. When you come here, there's a unique anointing for the day. Listen. Pay attention. Most of you, you do what you want. And when you do what you want, at the end of the day, you don't get results. And you begin to blame the pastor. No, don't blame me. I'm giving you instructions. Are you following the instructions? I'm not giving you instructions from my house. I'm taking instructions from the spirit of God and from the word of God. And I'm faithfully dishing it out to you. The proof is because it's working for others. <laughs> the fact that your radio is turned off does not mean the radio station is closed. The fact that you, have, you are living in your house in darkness, Tari, doesn't mean your neighbor in next door, Bridget, don't have lights. She has light on because she chose to switch on. You understand what I'm trying to say, Anis? It's your choice, my son. The frequency is the same. The radio station is the same. The same radio, the same frequency, the same buttons, but you may choose not to tune in. So for those people who come to church looking for prophets, I'm saying today, don't look for prophets. Deliver yourself. Walk through your breakthrough is here, church. We have done it. We have done it. We are here. We are the evidence that you can actually minister deliverance to yourself. And you can go through this prayer and fasting. I'm speaking to encourage you. De Daniel, the word of God says, he turned to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Church, turn to the Lord. Plead with him in prayer. Enter the courts of heaven with your cases. Plead with God. You said it in your word. I stand upon your word. Don't have plan B. Please. 
Listen to instructions, church, I'm teaching you. I'm helping you because I need to see you walk in your breakthrough. You see, the breakthrough is closer. It's closer. Breakthrough is certain. Church, breakthrough in Ephesus, it's certain. We are not thinking you're going to have a breakthrough. You're going to have it. Betsy, it's a reality. Breakthrough is a reality. Mama Valerie, breakthrough is a reality, Mama. It's not fake, Mama. No, 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 no. It's a reality, Mama. It's going to happen. Evans, do you understand my son? It's happening. Mama Ellen, it's happening. Breakthrough is a reality. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all the things that you are praying for and asking him. He says, I'm ready and available for you. This is why he says, Anesu, come. Let us reason together. Brother Shaki, do you hear me today? He's calling you. He says, come, my son. Let us reason together. Stop talking. Stop calling your friends. The Bible says, Daniel, he turned to the Lord. Turn to the Lord in this prayer. Turn to the Lord in this prayer. Turn to the Lord in these 21 days of prayer. Turn your face to the Lord. Come on, look in the eyes of God and say, Lord, they are laughing at me. You can't just come for glory in my life. If they are laughing and mocking at me, let's take together the mocking and the laughing. You must reason with God. Church, it's time to plead with God. I cannot go on like this. Hey. I cannot continue, Lord, in agony, in the spirit of travailing. Travail in spirit. Fight, but travail. Allow the spirit to press through you. For those who have walked this journey, today is what? 12 days. The 12, we have walked 12 days. We are past the half of the 21 days. You have another opportunity for this. How many days? Nine days left. You got to get your breakthrough. You have to get your breakthrough. You must get, if Daniel got his breath, God must send angels. He has to send someone with my answer. God has to work it. I don't care how. The how part is God's thing. The how part is none of your business. Listen, some of you, you are failing because you are looking too much. I think it's going to come this way. I think it's going to do it this way. I think it's going to do it that way. No, stop it. Stop that. Just be off everything these 21 days. Immerse yourself in prayer. Immerse yourself in prayer. Immerse yourself in prayer. These three days, I'm unreachable. Don't call me. Don't call me these next three days. Don't call me, please. If it's a deadly issue, matter of life and death, call elder. Don't call me. I got to get my breakthrough. I must get my breakthrough. That's the kind of spirit you must feel in your spirit. I'm not texting anyone. I'm not calling. It's my shut in time with God. 21 days and you never had three days that you separate for yourself. And you say, this one, no matter what happens, I'm not coming out of here. Wrestle. The Bible says Jacob wrestled with God. He wrestled with God. Jacob, he did not play games. He said, God, please. He didn't say, God, please. He wrestled. You know, there are times that you need to wrestle with God to say enough is enough. Tari, do you understand? You need to set your face, face to the Lord. And you say, enough of this nonsense. This nonsense must stop. Until you get angry. Until you are ready to fight. Until you are ready to demand your release. You are innocent. You have confessed all your sins. What is it that you didn't do? If you didn't confess, I'm encouraging you and inviting you today. Make things right with God. Once you make things right with God, now the Bible says, come with confidence and boldness. I'm not leaving the courts of heaven. I'm not leaving the house of the king. I'm not going anywhere. Wrestle for what is rightfully yours. Wrestle for what you know is right. I'm not the one who killed people in my family. I can't have these demons follow me every day. 
Your word says those who have done it must answer for their own what? They must answer for what they did. Go and speak to my grandfather. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. You see, when you wrestle, it's not just for your physical breakthroughs, the mistake you make. Say, God, anoint me for what your purpose is in my life. This is the time to know what God has called you to be. When you know what God called you to be, everything will fall in place. Because it is, the Bible says it is the purpose of the Lord that prevails. But you are busy looking for your own purposes, what you want. That's why you are having problems. Because, listen, it's so straightforward. Seek ye first the kingdom. Am I right? Does your Bible say that in Matthew 6.33? Does it say seek ye first the kingdom? Does it say that? What is your purpose in the kingdom? That's what you need to seek. <laughs> Pastor, what are you talking about? He has already given you all that you need. But he's waiting for you to find your purpose first. Then things begin to fall in place. Things will begin to... Why don't you take time this week to say, I'm not fasting for husband, I'm not fighting for job, I'm not fighting for money, I'm not fasting for anything. I want to seek the face. I want to ask God to release an anointing on my life. An anointing for what he called me to do. Everyone is called by God. It's not just the pastor who was called by God. You have been called by God. In my closing, prayer and fasting is the time to deny yourself. I tell you, if you finish 21 days and things are still the same, when you seek the face of God and you find it, eh, when you touch the grace of God in prayer, <sighs> church, listen to me. It's not in crying for things. They are already yours. Go and read Matthew 6, verse 33. It says all those things when you find kingdom, they will be added to you. We are wasting so much energy seeking things. Don't seek things. They are already yours. Oh, I'm not making sense. I said these things, they are already yours. These things, Lori, they are already yours. But we are wasting so much time. You are chasing your own legs. They are already on you. Naturally, they are there. They are yours. They are there, they are yours, right? Please, I plead with you in my closing. Don't be like the young man. Be like the old man. You need to ask, understand the wisdom I'm giving you. Don't work too hard. The illustration that I gave you of the old man and the young man. Work smarter. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of in Ecclesiastes, I'm not sure what verse, but it says a, a sharpened X, it does more than the X that is not sharpened. Can someone find that verse for me before we close? What it means is, today you can take someone as small as Marian. You find Marian in Africa where they do roads, right? You know, in Africa they do roads. Marian will be sitting in a small office with fan and cold drink. Huh? Marian will be listening in the headphones in your ears. Whilst a 70-year-old, twice the a year age, is there in the road digging hard, sweating in the sun, making lunch in a tin of paint with cabbages without any cooking oil. Sweating. Did someone find the verse? What verse is that? Can you put it? Let's read. Did you hear that, church? Did you hear that? If the X is dull, 
and its edge unsharpened. More strength is needed, but skill will bring success. You need to know how to get your breakthrough. All these things I've been teaching you going into the courts of heaven. Having your evidence and your witnesses ready. Knowing who is the public prosecutor, what does it stand for? Knowing who is your lawyer, what he represents them. Knowing who is the judge, who is the final say. I'm just giving you things that will make you succeed in these 21 days of prayer. So I said the story of Mary and she'll be working in the other, all the men, they are digging out there. What makes Mary and sit a small girl? Is she not embarrassed to see such old men working so hard? And she's sitting in the office drinking a cold drink. Is she not embarrassed? No, she's not. Why? Because her knowledge helped her to sit on that throne where she's sitting. Knowledge and understanding and her to be in that office. You want to get to a praying point of breakthrough? Mm -hmm. Don't search for these things. They are already yours. Seek to get closer to God. Seek to know him and the power of his resurrection. Seek to hear the voice of God. You are falling into pit because you are blind and you are deaf. May we stand up. Maybe for this past 12 days, you were beating the wind, working too hard. <laughs> Can you imagine if you say, I want to carry the burdens of other people? I'm not, it's not like you don't have burdens. You have burdens in your life. But what gives you the courage to say, I'm going to fast for children in the PCIC church? And Marian, you don't have a child of your own. But you have a burden such that when you begin to pray, you see the future of these children. You see the destinies of these children. You see the mistakes young people are doing in this world. The drugs, homosexuality, all those things. You see that this is coming in their children's schools. In their, you don't have a child, right? But in their children's schools as curriculum, you begin to shed tears. What you are doing is you are touching the heart of God. You are touching the heart of God. Listen. If an ex is thou. Bridget, you want to get married? Don't pray for your marriage, honey. Don't. Find one girl. And you really pour out your heart for her. You pour out your soul for that woman. You travail for Tariq. You travail for Marian. You travail for Michelle. Yet you are not married yourself. God is not a fool. Church, listen to me. God is not a fool. If you are a departmental, you've got a, a ministry that you had in this church, forget about yourself. Go to your list. Which people am I leading? I'm giving you tips to sharpen your ex. Evans, do you hear what I'm trying to say here? Obedience is better than sacrifice. I want you to pray to God for all the messages I've heard. Holy Spirit, bring them to remembrance. If it means I have to go and listen again, I'll go and listen again. One thing you must be so certain is that you've already won the victory. Don't think that if you don't pray, you spend a day without praying for you. see what the devil does? He makes you feel like if you spend the day without praying for your own problem, then you didn't pray today. You feel like you've done absolutely nothing. You see why the devil used that trick? Because he knows that when you give yourself for others, he pours into your life. Ah, church, come on, I'm giving you a tip here. When you pour into others' lives, then he looks back. Brother Jack, can you imagine? Just waking up one day, you spend the whole day fasting 
Not for yourself or your children. No, but for Evan's kids. Eohanan and Eliana. You actually go and ask Brother Evans, what are the names of your children? And he doesn't know why you're asking him. You have set your heart in prayer. Watch what will do to happen to your kids. When you invest in others, do you think my kids will go down? No, they will not. The devil is a liar. I've invested a lot in other girls' children, in other people's children. I believe I have victory. I truly believe my children will get victory. Ah, I don't care what the devil thinks. I don't care what their struggles are right now. But I know I have victory. I invested in others. Why shouldn't I get it? So, raise your hands and ask God right now. Holy Spirit, help me to know the heart of God is to cry for others and believers in my cousins, my uncles, my aunties. It should not be me only. It should not only be me, 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 me. No, Lord. I open my eyes to see the struggle of my uncles, my aunties, my cousins, my sisters, my brothers, my father's brothers, and all my friends from college who are struggling with drugs. Lord, they're all around me. My friends who are divorcing. Open my eyes. Come and pray. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Let me be an instrument these 21 days. Build me up. Build me up. Build me up. Cry out for mercy. Holy Spirit, make me an X. A battle axe in your hands. Which battle axe of God has failed? Which battle axe of God has failed in the past? Which battle axe? I want to be a battle axe in the hands of God. I want to be a better legs in your hands. Use me for your glory, Lord. Use me for your glory this 21 days. Lord, sharpen me. Lord, sharpen me. Lord, sharpen me. Lord, sharpen me. Just set aside days. Say the Lord for these days. I am going to focus on other, even if you have put your own agenda, say, Lord, I'm putting them behind you. I'm putting them in front of you. As you pray for someone, you're looking at your own prayer points. As you look for someone, you are putting your problems right in front of you. They are there. They are there. My problems are here. But Lord, I surrender them to you. Right now, I tackle. I tackle Olivia. Olivia's life. My God, she calls on your name. She cannot go down in shame. Lord, I rest so for your soul. Your word says who the son of man sets free is free indeed. She cannot continue to wrestle with these powers of darkness. I join my faith with your faith. Lift your faith today, Lord. Lift your faith. Revive you, oh God. Lift you up. Bless you, my God. Give you the husband she needs. My father, in the name of Jesus, I am breaking every spirit of limitation in your way. Pray for someone right now. Pray for somebody. Don't pray for yourself. The same way you pray for yourself is the same way you must pray for somebody else. The same way you want blessings must be the same way that's called love. God is love. God is love. God is love. Until we know how to call on the name of the Lord for others. Until you know how to be out of that selfishness. Until you know how to step out of your selfishness. Out of your selfishness. There's someone next to you who needs you. They need you to hold their hand. Somebody's struggling. They are calling on you. Their spirit is crying out to you. I need you. I cannot do it by myself. My brother, pull me out. My sister, pull me out. Help me. I'm about to die. They are crying out in agony. They are crying out in pain. Oh, travail for them. Travail for them. Cry out for them. They need God. Oh Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
It's not all about you, sister. It's not all about you, my brother. It's not all about you. It's not all about you. God wants to see your unselfishness. He called you for others. God called you for others. He didn't call you just for you only. He wants those people around you, those who are struggling. He says, hold their hand out. Pull them out. Pull them out. Pull them out. Pull them out with prayer. Travail for them now. Travail for them. Wrestle. Wrestle for your brother and sister. Wrestle for your cousin. Wrestle for your auntie. Wrestle for your uncle. You can't be the only Christian in your family. Save, I touch your grace, my life will change. I will never be the same. I touch your grace, my life must change. I, 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 declare this 21 days I will never be the same touch your grace my life must they will never be the same they will never be the same they touch your grace their lives must change afternoon, Lord, we come, God, Daddy, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Shalom is your name, Jehovah Giboa, Jehovah Sabawothi, we are in this together, we need your leadership, your guidance, we thank you today for every chain that was broken. We thank you today for every impenetrable ring of fire that you set around our lives and our children and our future, Lord. Impenetrable. Impenetrable. 
ring of fire and everything that is ours. We decree and declare today as we leave this place. Henceforth, we will not struggle again. Henceforth, we will not struggle again in the name of Jesus. Everything from this day will begin to flourish. <laughs> oh, we have joy. 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 We leave this place with joy. So much joy. So much. So much joy, Lord. Because we know it's definite that will prosper in everything we have set our hearts on, Lord. You are the one who grant us the desires of all our hearts. You said everything, leaving nothing out, everything you ask in my name, my Father will do it. Will do it for you. So that his name may be glorified. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are the head and not the tail, oh God. We are above and not below, oh God. We are blessed going out and coming in. We are blessed in the city and we are blessed in the country. Oh, the devil knows it. That is under our feet. We decree and declare today to the devil. Take note. You are under our feet. For we bear in our bodies the marks of Jesus Christ. Ah, for we bear in our bodies the marks of Jesus Christ. No demon on earth will prosper over us. They will not triumph over us because they are under our feet, Lord. And we are seated in high places with Christ Jesus during these 21 days, Lord. Strengthen us. Holy Spirit, we call on you. Strengthen us in this journey. Strengthen even our little children who may want to fast. We ask you that you strengthen them. Father, nothing of ours shall be left unturned. Because in the Bible, the Bible says they would allow their animals to fast with them. Animals would fast with them. So we do not have a lot of animals, but we have our children. And we will find a good way that they will fast with us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for empowering us. For we are clothed in your mighty armor. And we are stepping out in faith. For the battle has already been won. I bless your people today. Give their bodies strength. Nourish their bodies. Give them strength in prayer. Even at work, I pray for strength. Replenish the strength, the mighty strength of Yahweh. I bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Surely, finish and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen.